So these formulas we're going to start here. Okay. Number one is triangle. Okay. All these formulas are very important, but a right. lot of things you don't have to memorize. Okay. Right. So triangle you have to memorize. Okay. And it's area equals one half base times side. Yeah. Times base times side, right? Right. But the trapezoid, you don't have to memorize. This is why all you have to do is cut it into two triangles. Okay? And you know the height will be the same from either side because it's parallel. The height is H. Okay? And the base is base 1 and base 2. So I'm going to color, color it into two, two triangles. Okay? Blue triangle and green triangle. So instead of memorizing this, you can. Just cut it into two triangles, okay, and solve it. So the area for the green triangle would be base one, I'm sorry, base two times height times one half, right? Right. So the area for the blue triangle would be one half times base one times height. Okay. All right. I got These that. two, all you have to do is add them. Okay. So you don't have to memorize. Oh, all right. I got you. Number three, I'm going to show you a technique, uh, so you don't have to memorize that one either. If you have an aquarium, okay, let's say this is three, this is two, this one, the height is one, okay? You need to find the base area. With any types of cylindric shape, first thing is find the base area. It's three times two, right? The right. rectangular shape, right? So the base area. Plus to three times two, which is six. Now all you have to do is multiply with the height. So that's the secret. You don't have to memorize ten different formulas for cylindric shapes. Just know that you have to get the base area, multiply with the height. Okay. Gotcha. Now, six times one equals to six. Okay. Right. And this is true for any kind of shape, even if it's a cylindric shape. All you have to know is the base is a circle. So it's going to be pi r squared multiplied with h. If right. you have a like star aquarium, all you have to do is get the area of the star. Okay? What is the area of the star? Let's say it's 50. Okay? Right. Height is 10. So the the amount the volume of water in there is going to be this is 50 feet. This is 10 feet. It's going to be 500, 500. cubic feet. Right? Right. Volume will be again base area and height. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now let's move on. And this will be true for any kind of shape. If it was triangular, it doesn't matter what shape it is, as long as it's cylindric. Okay? So you don't have to memorize number three. Okay? You don't have to memorize number four either. The technique is this this. Whenever you have, let's say you have a you bake a cake. Okay. This is, let's say five, this is two, this is, let's say two inches. Okay? Right. Five by three. Uh, let me make it four. Five by four and two. Okay, now, it's easy to get the volume of the cake, right? Right. All you have to do is multiply. Five times four times two, four. Five times four is the base area times two, which is 40. Okay, now, right. when you bake a cake, you, you taste some corners. It's so delicious, you don't want to give it to your friend. Okay, you want to eat it yourself. So what you do is, you you cut off all the sides and make a pyramid cake and give it to him. You know, and he's all happy that you know it's a, looks. I mean, it's a nice looking cake. But do you know what proportion you had and what proportion he got? Mm, uh, no. You got two third of it. And the cone is, the pyramid is one third. Okay? All right. That's true for all kinds of shape. Whenever you cut it off and make a pyramid or cone or something out of it, okay, even if it's a circle, let's say if you go to an ice cream store, okay, and the ice cream store asks you, do you like a cup or a, or a cone? And you say cone. Do you know what proportion of ice cream you got? One third. If it's the same height, of course. That's a shorter. Right. But if it's the same height, you basically got one third of the ice cream. Okay? So right. you don't have to memorize number four either. Okay? 
All they right. do is one third. Okay. So if, if they give you asking the volume of the cone, just get get a cylinder volume, and then get a, get you know make one third of it. So the cylinder was pi r squared times h, right? Right. That's it. So if it was a pyramid, get one third of the base times well, base is uh, you can say base area, base area times height, okay? Or any other kind of shape. Even if it's a triangular shape and it's a pyramid like that, triangular pyramid is one third, uh, one third of the cylinder. All right. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So two, three, and four, you can, if, if you get this concept, you don't have to memorize these crazy formulas, okay? All right. Number five, you sort of have to memorize this formula, unless you know calculus. If you know calculus, there's a way to go around it. Okay, because surface area and volume is, is like surface area is actually a derivative of volume. But you don't, if you don't know it, you know, you just have to memorize it. So, unfortunately, volume of uh, uh, sphere equals to four third pi r cube. Okay, and the surface area. Equals to four pi r square. If you knew derivative, I'd say just the surface area is the derivative of the volume. So you do three up front, it's four pi r square. But if you don't know, you just have to memorize this too. But good good thing is it's rarely asked. No, it's not a common question. Uh, but I guess for your class you may need it. Okay, surface area of a right circular cylinder. This one, I don't want you to memorize this one either. Okay. All right. What you can do is you can just like like let's say you have a coke can, you cut it open, okay, and spread you know cut cut off the body, okay, the coke right here, you know, cut the whole thing, you get a rectangle, right? So right. you want to know how much tin does it have? That's the surface area, right? So this is height. And this way, this is basically the circumference of the circle. So this is 2 pi r, right? Right. And what's the area of this circle? Pi r squared. What's the area of that circle? Pi r squared. So basically, there are three parts to it, OK? The top of the co coke needs this much tin. The bottom of the coke can needs this much tin, OK? And the middle is a rectangle, and the rectangle is what? Base and height. So base is 2 pi r, the height is height, right? So right. you can use common sense to break it down into three parts and do it, right? So you don't have to memorize number seven either, okay? Got it? Yeah. Okay, now, uh, number eight, I'm video recording it so I can send it to you then so you can kind of you know, review it later, right? Right. A simple interest, interest equals to principal times interest times time. Total interest, interest rate times time, okay? Uh, say if you in invest 100 bucks, 5% interest rate, 0 0.05 for seven years, so you multiply with seven. So the interest rate is going to be 35 bucks. So you're going to earn 35 dollars. That's it. Okay. For compound interest, it works a little bit differently. Let's say if you invest 100 bucks today, so time zero, time one, and time two. So you invest 100 bucks. Okay. It goes to let's say it's five percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. If it goes up 5%, 105 bucks. Then it goes up another 5%, right? Right. Now, this extra $5 got reinvested again. So it's not only extra $5 out of this $100, this $5 will make some extra money too, okay? So that will be, so you have to multiply 105. If you, if you, uh, for the first year, all you had to do was multiply 105 once, and you have $105. The second year, what 
you do is one zero hundred hundred dollar. You multiply it twice. One zero five. One zero five. Okay. You do that. It should be one ten twenty five. And you can also write it as this hundred one point oh five square. Okay. So this is like the time. So every year you just increase it by one. Okay. So this goes up faster and faster. Make sense? That is this formula, compound interest formula. This is an important formula to know. Okay. Right. All right. And what's the last one? Free fall from height. I think it would be this. Is this U equals to, what is that? So oh, uh, so for uh, S equals H minus one half G T squared. So this is your, I don't know, have you taken physics? Yeah. Okay, in physics you must have gone over this, right? Well, I'm, I'm taking physics now. Okay, so you may not have gone over this. Uh, so this is just a basic formula. You can, uh, you know, just plug, plug in some of the values. The gravitation force, you just plug in the, the rate, meter or feet, whatever, you know, whatever is given in the question. And plug in the height, plug in the time, and you should have this. Okay? All right.